Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Shop Former Garage. Working with World Car Auto Group today, and I know it's been a while. Well, I just haven't been putting out a lot of content lately, and that's just because I ain't got the content. And I don't want to do a video on something that I've already done before. Um, this right here is a 2022 Mazda 3 Premier. And we're gonna replace a blower motor on it. Now, I've replaced blower motors on Mazda 3s before, but this one is a little bit different. It has a knee bolster airbag. It's in the way. So, blower motors are pretty easy to take out. You just got a couple screws. You know, you pull the wiring harness out, a couple screws, pull it right out. Not this one. This one's got a knee bolster airbag. It's in the way, so we gotta take a lot of stuff off. So, I'll show you how you can replace this blower motor yourself or if for some reason you're replacing the knee bolster airbag I'll show you how you can get that out on the passenger side it does have one on the driver's side too but of course we don't have to deal with that one only the one on the passenger side and I'll show you what this blower motor is doing it's, it's it ain't working and I'll show you how uh, we can diagnose it really easy so we know it is a blower motor so check it out Okay, so here is the blower motor. So it is right up inside there. And I don't know if you can tell, right uh, somewhere over here. See, there's a screw right inside there. You can't even see it, it's way inside there. And I can't get to that screw because this airbag right here it's in the way, so I need to get that off. But let's see what happens. And uh, just to let you know, this has a um, a cover that goes underneath, and I've already pulled the cover down. It's pretty easy. You just push these little tabs right here from the opposite side, and it pops out. There's one on either side. But let's see what happens whenever I turn the key on. And... So the blower motor's not on right now. Turn the blower on and I'm putting it on full blast. And I don't know if you, you probably can't hear it. There's no air coming out right there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna hit on the blower motor. And hopefully you can hear that. The blower motor's running. It's it's blowing perfectly fine right now and run it down run it back up and it's coming up it's kind of making some noise a little bit so it's, it's a little noisy I don't know if there's something might be caught in it Let's see if I turn it off turn it back on yeah it's starting up but you could see, oops. So you could see that it actually, it, it wasn't blowing and I just popped it, you know, with my hand right there and it just started blowing. And you can do that. If your blowing motor stops working, you can uh, hit it. You know, if you can't get to it, just, you know, hit the, the glove box or whatever. And, um, you know, see if it comes on. If it does, it, it's a blower motor. There's, there's a, an open circuit inside the winding of the motor itself. Uh, and it also could have to do with, um, also has to do with the way the brushes are in there. The brushes could not, not be making a good contact and when you hit it, it makes a good contact and it starts working. Um, either way, the blower motor has to be replaced. That's the only way to fix that. Um, the problem is we got this knee bolster airbag down here and 
for some reason why I don't know why Mazda changed the way that these glove boxes work um, previously you could uh, just uh, pull a glove box down squeeze it pull it right off you know no problem this one we got to do a lot of work to get it off we got to take all this stuff off here um, so let's get uh, started on that so one thing I have been working on lately is the drag and drive car and that's the drag and drive car right there and uh, you can see all of the interior and everything is all on the ground right there if you haven't seen any of this series man i urge you to check it out um, it's uh, really cool it's a big series and i will put a link right up here um, of that series but uh let's get to this so i got the customers junk out of their glove box and i stuck it in a box that's usually what i do i'm going to put this stuff aside and if you have uh, if you're taking your vehicle in for uh any kind of service um you know in a dealership or anywhere you know really and they need to get into your uh, vehicle they need to get into your uh, center console pull your center console into your glove box pull the glove box out anything like that uh, it's a good idea to take all your stuff out you know that way they're not messing with your stuff you know and they'll be happy that you took it out you know and uh, they don't have to take it out and you'll be happy they didn't mess with your stuff so um, it's it's a win-win um, so let's get let's look at this and see see what we need to do um, the first thing we're gonna have to do is take this glove box this cover off and uh, so it's fairly easy we need to pop this thing loose right here and these things right here we need to kind of lift it up and pull this up and then out it's hard for me to do it with one hand but I'm gonna have to do it the same thing on both sides so I'm gonna lift it up pull this up and then pull it out like that so uh, let me set the camera down and I'll see if I can do it okay this may be kind of hard to show but I'm gonna reach around and grab this thing and I'm gonna pull up pretty hard on it get it to come out and then the same thing on this side I need to lift it up a little bit pull this out and then grab it and I don't know if you can see that little hook right there that hook hooks it so when it's all the way down it's hooked on there you need to lift it up a little bit and then pull this piece up so it gets outside of that and then you can bring it off and then these hooks right here they just come right out so it's not that hard you just got to kind of fiddle with it a little bit and um, let's see the next thing is we need to take this beauty piece out right here so let me get let me get a trim clip a trim tool and this just has a bunch of clips on it and we're just gonna pull it right off so I got this clip and let me show you this. So I'm gonna stick this trim tool just right inside here like that. And you can see that this entire piece is coming off. Um, I think, oh, well, you wanna be careful about how much pressure you exert on that. Um, but uh, as you can tell, the whole thing has a bunch of clips on it and you just carefully <laughs> and I mean carefully pull that off so, and that that was being careful so just so you know it's <laughs> um, you just don't want to rip the heck out of it but and you can see all this is all up, off up there and we have this we have to take this glove box out we got a couple screws right here we also need to remove this seal right here and this um, kick panel right there. So I'm just gonna grab this this um, threshold. That's what I call it, a threshold trim, and just pull it up. It's just got some, you know, um, clips that are built into the thing, and then the seaming welt. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit 
out of the way. And there is a clip right there. You can get underneath it with a little screwdriver. Pop that open. Come on. Get out of there. Okay. And just pull that off like that. And this thing should just pop right off of there. And it has uh, these little clips right here. They go over the edge. There's a couple of them. And they go over the edge of this seam right here. And uh, then the seaming weld goes over that and goes over this whole thing right here and it holds it in. The seaming weld helps hold it in. And it's got that one clip right there. So we need to remove the glove box itself. We've got one bolt right back here, right there. And we've got these two screws here. Um, looking for hidden screws. Let's see what happens. Let's pull that off, pull these two out, and then see if we can pull this out. Okay, I got these two Phillips head screws right up here on the top. Take those two out, and one 10 millimeter bolt right there in the back. Get that out of there. And then, we just grab this thing. It's got clips on it. Oh wait, we got one, okay, yeah. We got one bolt, we got a one 10 millimeter bolt down here. So. Then we just grab it. Pull it off of there. like that so it has this little hook right there that hooks into that small hole right there and um, that uh, just helps you align it when you put the thing back um, and then there it is there's the knee bolster airbag We've got an uh, airbag connector right here and uh, we've got uh, a bolt right here. We got two nuts right over there. And that should be the whole thing. Now, uh, disconnecting this connector is uh, pretty easy. Should be pretty easy. Uh, it may be a two-way connector, I'll have to look. But um, it's a good idea to disconnect the battery and give it some time, you know, like five minutes or so before you disconnect something like this. Um, it does have a shorting bar to um, stop the thing from accidentally exploding or something like that. But uh, you don't want to take any chances. Uh, one of these things exploding in your face. Um, it could be a, a very, very, very bad day. Um, besides the damage, um, it could, you know, depending on how close your face is, you could be killed. So, uh, yeah, you don't want anything bad to happen. So let me disconnect the battery and uh, we'll come back and uh, disconnect that. Let me show you how this connector comes off. This is probably one of the easiest connectors to take off. It doesn't have a uh, you know piece you have to pull up that you can lose or anything like that. It's got this black piece right here that goes all along the bottom and comes over to the other side and you just grab it and pull it back like that. Or just pulls back and as you pull it back and you get it back enough it just unclips so it's this piece right there and that black piece right there <clears throat> opens up a shorting bar that's inside there and I don't know if you can see there's a shorting bar that goes across both of these right there and it shorts across both leads so you can't accidentally put electricity to it or whatever it'll just uh, ground out um, and uh, doesn't make it 
impossible to explode this, but it makes it, you know, uh, really hard to accidentally put static electricity or something like that to, to blow this thing up. And uh, this piece right here, this black piece, it pushes on that shorting bar and it unshorts it across. So whenever you pull this out, then it shorts it across again. So as long as this is not connected, that shorting bar is going across. So just to let you know what that is and why these airbags, they have uh, things like that. You know, it's, it's for safety. So now I'm uh, just gonna get this um, bolt off right here and these two nuts and uh, let's uh, get this thing out of here. Okay, let's get these two out of here. Just those two nuts and this bolt right here and then there it is and that's all to it now finally we got everything out of the way so we can get this blower motor and there is the screw that we couldn't get because of that knee bolster airbag so we get this off now Okay, let me see if I can get it out with this big old screwdriver slash um, drill. So that's one. There's one hidden way up inside there. So just need to kind of find it. get a real screwdriver. Okay. Get this under here. I still should have gotten a shorter screwdriver. There it is. Just fell out. And then this one right here. And we'll see if the customer's got any junk in their blower motor. A lot of times, uh, you get junk that came off the top of your cabin air filter will fall into your blower motor and get in that blower cage. No, I don't see anything in there. Looks fairly clean. Spins fine too. But um, like I said, the, the cabin air filter is right here and it's hard to get to on these vehicles. Not like the previous vehicles that were so easy like the easiest vehicles that I know to pull the cabin filter out and this is a brand new cabin filter they got one leaf right there let me just dump that out but sometimes it has a bunch of leaves on it and whenever you pull it off it, they just scrape out and they fall down they go right into this squirrel cage right here and then you turn your blower on it just oh, it's just making a bunch of noise and um, that's what causes that. And then you gotta do all this stuff to take the blower motor out just to get the leaves out of there. And, and it's such a pain. And, and it's easier just to make sure you check and, and clean your cabin air filter and replace it you know, in a timely manner before it gets all those leaves and stuff on there. That way that won't happen. So uh, let's look at the blue new blower motor. So this is a new one. I hope it's the right one. Oh. Better be the right one because we just took all that stuff off. And yeah, I mean it looks it looks to be correct. Sure does. And you can see that hole right there where that one screw goes. So <laughs> yeah, let's, let's stick this in there. Yeah, that's definitely the right one. So let me get this up in there. All right, let's get this up in here. Of course, it can only go on one way, so just find out the right way. Stick it up in there, 
and got a mini screwdriver here. I can't find my my small Phillips screwdriver. I have no idea what happened to it. I got the mini one, but then again, tools have been disappearing from this place like crazy lately. I don't know what is going on. Uh, I've lost, God, probably about a thousand dollars worth of tools, including my, including my very expensive $700 digital torque wrench, which I most definitely need. So, oh, well, let me get these, get these put up in here and I'll put this thing back together. Okay, I got the airbag in there. I got it plugged in. I'm gonna stick this on there. It's got these hooks that kind of hold it on for you so you can line it up. These nuts on here. This bolt. And then this plug right here just plugs, just pops right in. And that's it for that. All right, now this piece right here, with the little hook goes in down there. Make sure everything lines up. Just pop it in there, get in there. Got two screws up here on top. One bolt it goes inside here. One bolt down here in the bottom right. Now, this thing, we want to make sure that this thing is lined up properly before we start knocking on it. If you ever needed to replace these, say these little louvers broken, somebody's hanging on them, trying to stick junk in them or whatever, and they break, you have to take this whole piece off. You take the whole piece off and then you got a couple screws back here and this vent comes right out and you can just replace it. So. You don't have to live your life, you know, with this thing blowing in the wrong spot, you know? It's like your, you know, passenger yelling at you, you know, why are you taking the air all the time? Well, it's broken, you know, or vice versa. So let's get this up in here. Make sure it's all lined up, especially on the driver's side. And that is, Pretty much it. Make sure everything works. Now what? Now, this piece. This should just pop right in. There's a clip on the side right there. It pops right in. You got this clip. It goes down here. Come on, where does it go? Well, I know that it lines up. Okay, there it is. Put our seaming weld back in. Careful not to bend it. Threshold trim. And, oh, we need this thing. So this thing is just gonna pop in down here like that. So you just stick it on like that. Lift it up, make sure that the, let me show this to you. So we just pop it on like that, lift it up and make sure that this goes into place on both sides, right? I'm gonna lift it up and then it pops in. And then don't forget to hook this up. There it is. Okay, and then the trim piece that I took off 
without showing you. It just pops right in there. This piece right here goes into that hole right there. All right, and then the thing is gonna come up. There's this little piece right here goes into that hole right there. Make sure that it's in all the way. And then they just clip in. And that is it. And we are together. We need to hook up the battery and make sure that everything everything's good. Um, now, just a little disclaimer. Um, this is an American built vehicle. <laughs> you know, uh, I think it's um, built in Japan. Um, but this is, uh, I guess, what you would consider the American vehicle. Uh, U.S. and Canada. I know for sure have that knee bolster airbag. Uh, if you're in another country, you might not have it. It may be a little bit different. I am finding out, and I, it's really cool because I had no idea, but I am finding out that there are uh, different models of Mazas that I've never seen before, you know, that uh, you guys, you know, in other countries uh, deal with, and, and, you know, that's, that's what you live with, and I, I've never seen it. You know, I've never seen a um, a six five hybrid. You know, ever um, a um, uh, six thirty uh, E Sky Active X. I don't even know what that is. You know, I've never seen it, but it's really cool for me to hear about that. Um, if you have a um, a Mazda, um, run on down in the comments. Let me know what kind of Mazda do you have. You know, do you have something different, something that, that we've never seen? Um, I um, uh, have never um, had to work on a diesel Mazda, and they came out with them like for one year here in America, and I've I've never even seen one because they were in California. I live in Texas, you know. So um, yeah, I've never seen that. Um, so if you got something different, you know, uh, or you have a Mazda in general, hey, just run on down in the comments. Let me know. Hey, this is the kind of Mazda I have. Um, so um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I got it running, got the air blowing nice and cool. Let me turn it down. Works good. No more um, noise. You know, I had a little bit of noise in there, but not anymore. Works absolutely perfect. So um, that's pretty much it. If uh, you guys got any ideas of any content you want, you know, um, run on down in the comments. Let me know. Uh, I mean, I have only got what comes in the front door and that's it you know so it's the only content i can come up with other than the drag and drive car and that's my baby you know but um if there's something you really want to see um you know put it run on in the comments you know let me know and uh, i'll see what i can do see if, if i can come up with something you know how to um put a spare tire on a mazda miata you know i mean <laughs> that's a trick question um because miata ain't got a spare tire but um you know just something something simple that's fine you know anything just let me know um i appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you thanks for watching for shop for my garage and world car auto group i will see you in the next one